I find this is going to be a bit of an insert into my video, folks, um, so that I can show how I'm doing the treadle wheel for my uh, Joseph Moxon lathe. You can probably just see in the background over here my old treadle lathe. Um, what I want to do is, um, is make sure that I've got the centre absolutely dead centred. Now, this is supposed to be a two and a half foot wheel. Um, the, the board that I've got is slightly bigger than a two and a half foot wheel. You can probably make out there are three pieces in here actually. So there's a little bit of a jagged edge on there. So it's a bit difficult to get, you know, the exact right angle along there. I don't know if you can notice that. You see a little bit sticking out of there. So it's not exactly square. These sides are. This is pretty good. Each of these pieces that glued together is pretty square. So it's never going to be quite perfect I'm afraid. But I did want to find the nearest I could to the dead centre. Anyway, I've done an overkill. I've measured it as many ways as I possibly can. You see these marks on here, that they'll show exactly how I've measured each part. So this one's a measure from here, across to there, at 15 inches. And this one's 15 inches as well, because that's my two and a half foot, my 30. You can see it doesn't quite get all the way there, because I've got space on the edge here. So I've created a, a bit of a square in the centre here. I've taken it from this side, and from this side as well, you see the lines don't quite match, but they're not too far out, are they really? So I can tell that these are coming from here and these from here, and there's my square. So when I took a straight edge and went from corner to corner, I was expecting it to go exactly from corner to corner from those squares. It didn't quite, ever so slightly out. Not an issue for me. What I did is I put my little nail in there, into the exact place I thought it was first. Not quite right, judged it back again, pulled it back a bit, but as you can see, I've got all this to play. All I need to do really is get a circle out of this. So there's no point in being fussy about it. Just bang the nail in there, a little bit of the way. I'm, I'm lucky because I run a lathe, so it's easy for me to be able to create one of these. So that's a nice, straight, flat edge for me. Drill a hole, stick my pencil into there. And the reason why I've done that is I didn't want to do it by hand. I didn't want my pencil wobbling around. Also, I didn't want there to be any inconsistency with the length of the string. So I put a little bit of a hook through there. You can put anything you like around there, but I didn't want to tie it round because, as you know, if you go like that, the string is going to get shorter. I know, I'm exaggerating it. But I thought, if I do it this way, then I should be able to get a nice circle on there. So this fits pretty well, and it just fits tight enough so that I can shove it down a little bit if it's necessary. So that should give me my circle that I need. So if I keep that... Um, just nice around there, you know, just nice and straight to the edge there. I should have cut that little bit off there, shouldn't I? But I don't need to really. Take that around there, you can see how I can just about get my circle out of there. It's a little bit tight that. I might need to just pull that in just a little bit and make a slightly and um, ever so tight. Whoops, can you see how that's going there? Can you see the difference there? Now that's the difference when you get this slightly wrong. So it's really important, I'm teaching myself here at the same time, to sort of put your thumb there so that you've got it straight like that the whole way around. Now you probably see for yourself how that now is starting to um, not scribe anymore. So let's get that back on there in place, in there. Why I didn't cut off that little bit of extra string, I really don't know. I have to keep pushing the pencil down because unfortunately the pencil, of course, um, it will sort of wear down and you only want it to stick out just a little bit so you've got it nice and square to the bottom of there, that's the thing. I've got it on a nail, it's a very small nail um, and it's a smooth nail as well, it's not a rusted nail. I, wasn't, I was tempted to use one of my old rusty nails, I thought what's the point, I don't need anything else. But, but then I decided no, I want it nice and smooth so it'll rotate nicely around there. So this is just me making this um, circle for my, oops, I'm going to lighten it circle for my um, wheel take that all the way around there and then I'll get this one cut off and then we can see how it all works now if I take that down here I'm doing this wheel to the ax absolute maximum that I can get it all the way around there I can just get it in there just get it in there I'm going to shave off a little bit of this wheel of course so I am getting the absolute maximum I can get out of this wheel so you can see can't you the piece of wood that's been done it's just catching the edges there, just on those edges there, and it's not quite reaching on the edge here. So um, that shows that the board isn't quite as square as the chap who gave me the board in the first place reckoned it was. So let me just deepen that mark a little bit so I know which is the main one. It's the outside one on there, isn't it? That's the one that I need to be following rather than the one where it started to turn ever so slightly. Now, one thing I'm not worried about is um, is how circular, exactly circular this wheel is. This is just getting the rough off really, because what I'm going to do is put this on its axle 
and then you're going to be able to see, um, well, I'm going to be able to turn the wheel properly. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanted to show you uh, with regard to the wheel is what's going to go in the centre, and that's the axle. This piece of wood that you can see here, am I showing you the right bit? Well, I don't know if you can see the thickness of this around here, but if you look at, yeah, just look there, see that thickness there, that thickness is the same as this thickness here. Yeah. So this is the piece of wood that, that, uh, that is sandwiched, which is going to be the wheel. So the idea was going to be to drill a hole through the middle of there um, using the, the nail point, um, but, uh, but also using a piece of wood. So this piece of wood here has the axle already axle hole already drilled through it positioning that over that area there using this to create my square for this to fit into place which should be fine so that i can then drill a hole directly through there i might show that i don't know yet um i don't think it's going to be that complicated so maybe it's not worthwhile anyway the point is that um here is my um uh, axle it's, it's a crook axle whoops let me just make sure that that's in the picture this is a a mistake that I've been making it's the second time I've had to do this part of the video because I tend to get it off the video so we've got about a half inch um, through the middle of here this is the axle um, the, um, the, the these are probably about um, 7 16 you know the bolts going through here perhaps even a little bit less um, the bushes are certainly um, I, I think the bushes are 7 16 perhaps a little less than half an inch but um, I mean, these are significantly less I don't know what these are probably about um, um, quarter of an inch or something like that actually now I think about it but anyway the point is this is brilliantly done uh, not by me I hasten to add otherwise that would be showing off wouldn't it and I uh, was English are not very good at that not normally anyway but uh, if you look down here you'll see that there's a pin that's going through there I hope you can see that clearly I might even take it a little bit closer to the camera I'm not sure if you can see that I hope you can there's a pin going through there well if I turn this round you oops be able to see oops daisy you ought to be able to see there's a pin on the other side there as well so okay let's put that back on the board so we can see in fact one piece is already cut and removed so i can explain that piece can't i there are two bearing plates i'm not sure if you can see these very well but um i'll see how i can manage here's one you see the shape here can't you um these are the places where the cheeks of the lathe fit through i've got two of these so there'll be one on uh, on, on, the, on one side underneath the lathe and then the other one will be over this side here this is this one um, that you can see over here so what we're going to get is these two pieces here together and then going between these two pieces we'll have the axle now you should see that the if I hold this piece you might just be able to see that the length on there is just about spot on so what happens is the this goes through the plate much further down here in the middle of, the, of that plate and then passes through to the other side so you can then see if i can just shift those out of the way a moment you should then be able to see that this will go through the piece of wood that this here this wing nut here will lock onto the bush notice these attractive wing nuts he's making isn't he as well brilliant job he's done paul he's an excellent chap this engineer he's a retired engineer and he's put a real effort into it in for me here this is just um, basically um, two uh, metal bars um you know flat bars and what he's done is he's drilled the hole and then tapped it for me and then simply banged out the ends like that to give them a little bit of shape very good i mean you can put a bar through here to tighten it up as well as tightening it by hand brilliant way you don't need to fiddle about with spanners and stuff but they, they knew their business in the 17th century and they're certainly teaching me lessons as well at the same time anyway if i tighten this you might notice i don't know if you can or not that this here goes further in and out in other words, what it does is it helps connect into there. In there, the other end will, will demonstrate it more easily, I think. But in there, we find there's a fitting that corresponds absolutely perfectly with this fitting here. So this tightens onto there. This will be on the side of the wood, of course, on the inside of the wood. The bush is the right length, so this tightens onto the bush like that. So that is then locked in place. This then protrudes through the other side. Yeah, that won't come and done of course and even if it does you can lock it again afterwards yeah to lock properly into there yeah so all clever stuff now if, if, if there's a bit of a gap in there this can be taken up by tightening this here as well so it's an adjuster i did wonder um why the original in the um uh, in in the 17th century you know joseph moxley for instance had two wing nuts on there well this chap has obviously discovered exactly why that is the case anyhow um other than that 
At the other end, you can see the very same thing. This fits into what you call the bearing plate, the leg yeah. of, you know, that, that I should, whoops, sorry, let's see if I can get that in, into the camera there. So that's the bearing plate, and I hope you can see on there where this pin, right, fits into there. Well, of course, the other thing that you can realise, uh, once you've worked all of this out, is, is that the, the, there's an O on there, and there's an O on there. It means the outside of the plate, that's where it is on this side, but it's there, so there it is, an O on there. Then there's an A on one side and a B on the other side. Just said that, yeah, that's a B on there, there's an A on there. Um, that tells us that this is the side that, that this part of the axle goes in, and that's the side that this part of the axle goes in. The whole thing comes apart, of course, by unscrewing the bolts. So, um, that all needs to be fitted into here, of course, um, and oiled up or greased up accordingly um, in there. And then it will spin all rather nicely. Now, I can't really show the spinning on here because it's a bit, like, you probably get the idea anyway, but you'll see that that will actually spin on there. It doesn't spin like that, of course, this is rotated by the, um, uh, well, I forget what he calls it now, just like a leather strap. I think he even calls, you know, describes it as a kind of shoe. But you see how the whole thing is going to work, how the whole thing comes together. The engineer's done an absolutely fantastic job of recreating the actual 17th century um, axle that you can see in Joseph Mock's in his diagrams there. So, Anyway, thanks for watching. My next job is going to be to, to cut these off. I'll put some piece of wood on here so that I can cut the level all the way down. But like I said, it's not too much of an issue for me because I'm going to be putting this on this axle here, putting something against it, a piece of wood like this, so it turns with that piece of wood in front. In other words, I'm going to have um, a rest, like a tool rest. I'll put my chisel on that, and while this is turning here, then I'll be chiselling away at the edge of this. So I'll end up with a round piece anyway, and with a groove inside. So it's not imperative that the sawing is right. It just makes it a little bit easier when I start to do my, um, uh, you know, when, when I start to do my chiselling, really, when I start to do my turning on it. So uh, that's the stage that we're at, at here now at the moment. I'm hoping that sometime tomorrow I'll have all of this complete. So I'll have this through the centre here, all my bolts in place, and then um, I, I can fit this because I already have my what they call bearing plates made. Drill the hole through here, set that up on my lathe um, so that I've got the um, uh, you know so I've got the whole thing working properly on the Batista lathe, so I can start using my um, uh, my Joseph Moxon lathe as opposed to my it's slightly out of picture here at the moment, but my my um, 1730s or just after 1730s maybe um, treadle lathe, my my iron weed wheel treadle lathe there. So. Um, I, I, I'm going to be putting this one up for sale actually because you know, I need this room in here and, and I'd rather be working on my uh, actual 17th century reproduction lathe rather than an original um, 18th century lathe um, even though it's a beautiful piece and I've loved using it um, it's, it's, it's in my way, I haven't got room for, for more than one treadle lathe really and I'd rather be using um, an actual 17th century piece of equipment or rather a reproduction 17th century piece of equipment so next we'll move on to fitting the wheel into place.